Oh, hey, we're back, guys. <sighs> I gotta tell you, because uh, I know I can be honest with y'all. I am real tired right now. I mean, I slept all right. You know, I had pretty good breakfast, but like, mentally, I'm tired. Claire's working hard to get you guys the Mermaid D&D book, and I am splitting my time between commissions and videos so that we can get you guys all the content you deserve. I definitely want to get to the prism painting tutorial and I want to upload it for you guys. A lot of you have been asking to see it and I want to share my tricks with you. But I also want to do the next starter video as soon as possible. Between all of that, I am just pooped. But you know, sometimes my best work comes out of my most tired self. And I gotta say, these last three Pokemon armor designs have been kind of a renaissance for me. I'm rethinking my process and I'm trying to break out of the routine that I've been doing for the past few months. I'm getting more creative with concepts, and more adventurous with posing, and more dynamic with my colors and values, and I can't wait to show you guys what I've been working on. One routine I am sticking with is copying and pasting the Q&A. Here are some frequently asked questions pertaining to these videos. I work in a program called Procreate. It's an app for the iPad. It's super intuitive and very affordable. I highly recommend it to anyone just breaking into digital artwork. The models you see me drawing over are posed by me in an app called Art Pose. There's a male and female edition, and I recommend both for anyone who doesn't have 24-7 access to nude human models. I would also like to advise any artist not completely familiar with human anatomy to not trace over the models like I do in these videos. Without an internalized understanding about how the human body works, tracing characters will end up looking awkward and uninformed. Learn human anatomy from real humans, not from apps like Art Pose. They're good models, but not great for teaching anatomy. These pieces were all commissioned by individuals who contacted me through my Instagram. I'll link my page here. I take on about five to seven commissions every two weeks or so, and it's often first come, first serve. If you'd like to commission a set for yourself, be sure to follow me on Instagram for updates on my availability and prices. Of course, if you have any other questions, be sure to drop them down in the comments and I'll try to get to them all. Alright guys, I hope you enjoy these three Pokemon armor designs. Roll the tape. The first piece we're going to talk about is probably the most interesting of the three in this video. When clients order these Pokemon armors, they often have specific directions they want me to take the design in. Sometimes they want me to draw inspiration from other fictional characters. Other times they focus on conceptual themes like royalty and power, and sometimes they ask me to reference a particular culture. For his commission of a Mega Mawile armor set, this client requested that I look at the Benin Woman Warriors to inspire the armor and more importantly, the hair. Benin is a country in Africa that until the 20th century was governed by the Kingdom of Dahomey. In its time, Dahomey was known as the Sparta of Africa and was home to some of the most feared warriors the world has ever known. An army composed entirely of women, the Dahomeyan warriors were known for their resistance to pain and refusal to back down from a fight no matter the cost or the odds. It's an amazing part of history that I would argue is pretty unknown in Western culture, but I encourage you guys to look at these women some more. They are so awesome. To really capture that ferocity and power, I posed this character in a sturdy, unmoving stance. And because the Pokemon influences Mawile, this was the first of these armor sets that I've made so far where I drew the character from the back. I focused mostly on the animated hair, which was a huge challenge for me because I don't draw braids too often. I thought it would be apt to use the spearheads that Dahomey warriors tended to use as teeth for the hair mouth, hanging from braids weaved into the tangled dreads that ended up kind of looking like venom. For the armor, I kept it minimal. A lot of African cultures have a tendency to under-accessorize, and for good reason. I mean, could you imagine how hot you would be charging into battle in a full suit of armor in 120 degree weather? I also drew some inspiration from the Dora Malai, the Wakanda Special Forces from Marvel's Black Panther. Coincidentally, these characters were also inspired by the Dahomey Warriors. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I really wanted to up my game with color and contrast, and I think I did a good job with that on this piece. All in all, it's one of my favorite armors I've done so far, and I think it's a really clever reinterpretation of the Futakuchi Ona that Mowile is based off of.
The next armor we'll talk about was commissioned to be based off of the Pokemon Gallade. The client wanted a little mix of the Mega and Standard form, but in the end I drew most of my inspiration from the former. Now this client had a ton of ideas they wanted me to incorporate into this design. Fictional characters like Jedi and Doctor Strange to give the look a feeling of mystical power, D&D weapons and skills that I didn't fully understand, Dark Souls, Elder Scrolls, Fable 3, Assassin's Creed, moves that their Gallade knew, and stats from tabletop RPGs. But let's just say it was a lot. <laughs> I find that with prompts like this, I need to filter through all of the sources and condense the main essence of what the client wants to see. That way I can make a piece that makes them happy, but doesn't completely drain me. The first thing I wanted to do was get a cool, dynamic pose that met in the middle between physical dexterity and mystical power. Appropriate for Gallade, I think. You'll notice that in all of these designs, I'm no longer tracing over the art pose model like I've done in previous videos. I was finding that this limited the level of dynamism that I wanted to exaggerate in many of these designs, and for this one specifically, I really wanted it to look exciting. I've also been watching a lot of Avatar and Korra lately, so the idea of Tai Chi fighting and mystical energy manipulation was fresh in my mind. I ended up going with an enchanted blade that was almost an extension of the character's body, cast in one hand and wielded by the other. This allowed me to create an exciting two-point lighting scenario when I went into colors, and I forced myself to include a secondary light source from the hand casting the sword. I had a teacher in art school who told me that you don't need to include every color of the rainbow into one piece, and while I agree with him, I also love rainbows. So happy Pride Month! Here's a gay pride psychic swordsman that boasts every color of the rainbow. I was so happy with this guy, and it really felt like a turning point for all of my armors in the future. The last design we'll talk about today was actually the first one of these that I made. This was the one where I decided to stop tracing the art pose figure and get more dynamic with my colors and values. To be honest, I'm surprised it took this long for someone to commission a Sylveon armor set. As of this year, it's confirmed to be one of the top 10 most popular Pokemon of all time, and while it's really not my favorite Pokemon by a long shot, I was excited by the potential for what an armor set based off of a cute little fairy fox may look like. Actually, this client specifically asked that the armor not be so small and cutesy. In fact, they asked that the design, while retaining its fairy influence, should look powerful enough to defeat a dragon. I really like that simple yet effective concept to base this design around. I immediately started thinking about magical girl animes and how they kind of nail that whole pretty and powerful look. Pink is my favorite color, and I love reappropriating it from just being a passive princess and slapping it onto some badass warrior. I wanted to play up the ribbon theme, and embellish the plate armor as much as possible. Lots of little gold adornments and accents to break up the white and pink. Using white as the primary color meant that I was going to work with a lot of reflective light, and I felt like this might be one of the best examples of my prism painting style. It really gave the whole design shape in a way that I can only describe as tasty. This will be the flagship of my new series of Pokemon armor sets, and an example of how my work will evolve from this point on. I'm really happy with it. Side note, I sent this finished piece to the client who commissioned it about a week ago and I never heard back from them, so if you're watching this, check your Instagram messages so I can send you the full-sized file. Your Sylveon is waiting for you.
Alright guys, that is the end of today's video. Like I said, we're working on a bunch of stuff right now, and we're gonna make sure that you get all of the content that you're looking for. Keep an eye out for the prism painting tutorial video and the fire starter, and as well, the next League Fixes video. Alright guys, peace and love, Black Lives Matter, Happy Pride Month, wear a mask, protest safely, rest, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you all in the next video.